Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript. Today we're going to be discussing constants, more on operators, and the switch statement. So let's start. Okay, so what if you want to create a variable that can't be tampered with? You don't want its val value to change. What you can do is, instead of using the var, we can use the const when declaring our variable. So that's short for constant, of course. So I'm going to use my generic x, x variable and I'll set that equal to 3. Now, let's try changing that value. Then create an alert box that'll show us the value of x. So I'll click save, then I'll refresh the page, and notice how it says 3. That's because, well, we made a constant. Uh, and we can do the same thing with strings. So I'll put in, hi, how are you? And I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to concatenate these strings. And I don't think I've ever done concatenation like this before. I put a plus on between strings, but I don't think I've done it like this using an assignment operator. So I'll, I'll show you that way. Um, good. You. So I'll click save. Now, do you think this string will be added onto this one? Let's find out. Refresh the page, and nope, only says, hi, how are you? Uh, and that's about it with the constants. Uh, just short, sweet, and to the point. Can't change them. So let me show you how um, that this concatenation can really work. So we'll change this to a regular variable. I'll save, and I'll refresh the page. And it does. Hi, how are you? Good, you. Okay, let's go through all the operators that we've learned so far, because we've gone through a lot. So the first set we went through were the arithmetic. Did I spell that right? Yeah, I did. And that was addition, oops, subtraction, multiplication, division, and the modulus. We also gone through the assignment operators. And these were the ones with the equal sign. So the equals to, add equal, minus equal, multiply equal, divide equal, and the modulus equal. And what that does is, what, what these right here do is it pretty much saves the previous value of the variable and then does whatever this symbol is on the left with whatever numbers on the right. So it says like, so if, it's, so if the variable x is 5 here, and then you plus equals 2, it'll save that 5 while adding 2 to it and you'll get 7. And that's pretty much what these four right here do. So, or these five, excuse me, one, two, three, four, yeah, there's five of them, excuse me. Uh, next were logical operators, and that was the and and or. And if you remember, what these did was it would, uh, uh, it would create a Boolean value, it would result within a Boolean value depending on uh, whether, whether these two expressions on either side were true or false. So the ands would only come out as true if both expressions on either side were true. And the or on this side would evaluate to true if only one of the two expressions were true. That's why it's or. So if, is this true or is this true? If so, go on. Then the next were the comparison. The comparison operators. And these were the like the less than less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, then the is equal to, and the not equal to. So now I'm going to show you a new operator called uh, the conditional operator, and it stands by itself. It is a question mark. And how you end up using this one, this operator, is uh, let's say you have a variable. Let's just try declaring the variable. So you'll say something like var x for an example is equal to then you have an expression in here so you could have like a comparison in here you, you could have comparison multiple comparisons using logical operators inside whatever and then following that you'll use the question mark the conditional operator and two other variables so I'll use a y colon z and this is kind of like an if else statement if you remember from the if else and what it does is if this expression if the whole expression within here so you could have a lot of stuff in there evaluates to true 
then uh, the x value would then be equal to the y value. If it results to false, then the x value would then become the value of the z. So let's try this out. So let's do a var x, a var y, and let's set the y equal to 5, and then var z, and set that equal to 10. So I'm, so let's uh, modify this x using the conditional operator. So x equals, now this, uh, this uh, expression I'm going to create is silly. You'd never, there's never any kind of expressions as simple as like the 5 is greater than 3. Of course that's true. What's even the point of doing that? It will always be true. But uh, just, just for time's sake, use this, the conditional operator, and then type in y colon z. Then end it with a semicolon. Now let's create an alert box and stick our x in there. Since this expression evaluates to true, then x should now be equal to whatever y is equal to, which is 5. So let's refresh the page. And it is. There's your 5. If we make this a less than, which would then be false, and now it should become the value of z, which is 10. And it does. There's your 10. And that's about it for the conditional operator. Okay, I'm going to leave all those up there just so you can still see them. Okay, now we're going to be working with a switch statement. And what the switch statement is, is basically like uh, writing out a bunch of ifs. If you have to write out a bunch of ifs, like maybe you have a grocery, maybe you're the owner of a grocery store, and you have to make, you have to create a bunch of ifs that represent each product that the customer can buy, and you have to pretty much add on to their bill, I guess you could say. So, uh, let's do that. Let's say the customer can only create, uh, can only create, uh, or can only buy one product. So we'll say var food is equal to prompt. Let's create a prompt just because. And inside, what product did you buy? And then set this the default to type here. So whatever the person types in will then become the that value for food. So in order to make a switch, what you do is you type in the word switch, then within the switch statement you type in the variable, so I'll type in food. Okay, then a open curly brace, then a closing curly brace. Now inside here, you type in every possible case, every possible scenario that you want to have checked, basically. So if I want them, for an example, to, I don't know, their, their bill will be $5 if they buy bananas. What I do is I type in case, then whatever they could have typed in for their string, I'll type in banana, followed by a colon, then after that, and you do not have to have curly braces after this. You can, I don't know, no, I'll create an alert box. It'll tell them, okay, your bill is, oh, five dollars, like that. Then after this, and I'll explain this to you in a moment, you create a break. So if I click save, and I refresh this page, I'll type in banana, and I'll click OK, and now it says your bill is $5. So the reason why this is like a bunch of if statements is because you can create uh, as many different things that you want. And remember, I also want you to bear in mind, you can make these numbers too. So if you're working with numbers, you could put in another whatever variable it is and put down case 3, case 4, case 5, and you don't need the quotes around it. Uh, the reason why I have quotes here is because I'm dealing with strings. So, uh, control V, control V. So I'll make this, I don't know, apple, and I'll make this orange. And the apple will be two dollars, and the orange will be, I don't know, two fifty. It's probably a lot for one apple and one orange. It's probably way too much. I think people would go broke. 
So I'll start this again and I'll type in Apple and I get the two dollars. So that worked as well. Now the reason why we have the break, what this does is uh, we don't it, once we get to the right answer because it's going to go through this switch goes through every case uh, once we find the correct case we don't want it to continue checking all the other cases because that's going to take time and as we know users do not like to sit in front of their computers waiting for a browser to finish loading or processing data that's going to make them angry and they won't come back so once it's found the right one like for example when it found the apple it didn't even check the orange it just went on and that's about it with the break now if you want a default, a default value to appear up if you want something to pop up if none of these cases work you can create what's called the default value and after this you do not need a break because it's since it's being the since it's the last thing that's evaluated anyways you don't have to worry about putting a break in there so in this example I'll just put in your um, free I'll just put in free so if I refresh the page and I type in I don't know Xbox I click OK and now it says free because it was not any of the values uh, or it was none of these strings these different case scenarios it was something that well I guess it's free <laughs> free Xbox well that's a dream uh, and that's about it for the, the switches and again you, you can make these different numbers and, and you can even combine them it, you can have some of them as strings and others and numbers all depending on uh, whatever scenario you're working with so I hope this was a good example uh, and that's it for this tutorial